Welcome back to our series on how math is used in construction. In this lesson, we'll be looking at air volume and why air volume calculations are important in construction and how to do some. When a building is designed, calculating the air volume is really important for several reasons. Let's look at these. So for heating, most places in the world we worry about heating and we need to know the volume of the air that we need to heat. For cooling or AC, uh, again, in a lot of parts of the world, it's very important that we know how much air we have to cool when the outside temperature is too hot. Moisture control, something a lot of people don't think about, but really important. Buildings need to breathe. The air needs to be moving to control moisture buildup. So depending on the climate you're in, you may have an excess of moisture, you may have not enough moisture, you may have moisture just developing in certain places such as on windows in cold climates uh, during the winter. And so it's very important that they are move around, be able to absorb moisture and release it as needed uh, so we don't get mold buildup, condensation, unhealthy air situation. So very important for moisture control. Overall comfort and health. Warm air rises. So if there is adequate air movement, then the warm air will tend to go to the ceiling, cold air to the floor, our feet will feel cold, leading to just an uncomfortable environment. We wanna keep that air moving. And so we need to know how much air there is to keep moving, the height of the ceilings, all those things, so that we can keep an even air temperature throughout our rooms. Also for energy savings. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more again, so really important for energy savings and for the life of your equipment, that you actually have systems that are sized properly for the building. If your system is too small, it'll be running all the time and be overworked. If it is too large, we actually run into problems that is just as bad, where the system will run, this goes either for heating or for cooling, the system will run for a very short period of time and then turn off. And this cycling is very hard on the equipment and it is not good for energy savings. Equipment, either a furnace or a AC, takes a lot of energy to start up. And so once we get it running, we wanna keep it running for a longer period of time. If it's too big, it will just shoot a blast of hot air or of cool air, thermostat will kick it off and then it'll just continually cycle like that. So we don't want that either. So very important that we size our units correctly. So let's just start with the idea of compound shapes. So compound shapes just mean shapes that are made up or we can break down into multiple pieces that are easier to calculate. There is a excellent lesson on help teaching on the volume of compound shapes. That deals much more with the specifics of how to break down the shapes. But we can just use those same concepts. If you're unsure how to do that, please review this lesson. When we're calculating rooms, as you're going to see in the next few examples, we need to break down the building by rooms. It's okay to some degree to calculate just the overall volume of the building, but when it actually comes to installing ductwork and deciding how that air is going to flow, we need to know the volume of the different rooms and the purposes of the rooms. Important to break down each room, the square footage and the, the ceiling height so that we can calculate the volume and to track those because we need to know the use of what those rooms are used for. So let's look at just air replacement. Air replacement, it just means that the volume of the air in a room needs to be changed every so often. And depending on what that room is used for and the size of it, those kind of things, that may vary. Different building codes uh, vary and or between states, provinces, countries. So you'll need to check those um, to see, but they generally range between three and 15 air changes per hour. So what this means is that, um, say in a basement, with four air changes per hour, whatever the volume of air in that basement is, that should be changed four times an hour. Every 15 minutes, that air should have been recycled through and you have fresh air back into that room. 
some uh, situations, especially say a public situation with uh, smoking involved in it, may go up as high as 20 because they want to keep that air changing very, very quickly. So let's look at some examples. So our first one here is a basement with four air changes per hour. The basement is 24 by 36 with an eight foot ceiling. So to calculate the volume, length times width times height, 24 times 36 times eight, is 6,912 cubic feet. But now we wanna change that air four times in an hour. So we're gonna multiply by four and we get 27,648 cubic feet in an hour. We want to break this down to minutes so we can divide by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour and we get 461 CFM. This is cubic feet per minute and these are the units that pretty much all fans use cubic feet per minute. So now let's look at the kitchen and dining room with eight air changes per hour. Of course with cooking smells, more moisture being generated, uh, more important that we turn that air over on a more regular basis. So this area is 24 by 20 feet with an 8 foot ceiling. So again, we'll calculate the volume, which comes to 3,840 cubic feet. We're going to multiply by 8 for 8 air changes per hour, and we come to 30,720 cubic feet per hour. Divide by 60 and we get 512 cubic feet per minute for the kitchen and dining room. So three bedrooms with six air changes, and here I just combined the total square footage instead of breaking it into three separate rooms, just to make it so we could go through the lesson more quickly. And so we have a total of 288 square feet, eight foot ceiling. So when we calculate our square feet, times our height, we get a volume of 2,304 cubic feet. We're going to do six air changes, which gets us to 13,824 cubic feet per hour, divide by 60, and we have 231 cubic feet per minute. So in this case, we're going to look at a living room with nine air changes per hour. So the room is 24 by 30 feet with a 12 foot vaulted ceiling. This means that it is open to the peak of the roof. First of all, let's calculate the bottom eight feet since that is a rectangular prism. 24 times 30 times eight is 5,760. Then we're gonna work on the vaulted part, the triangular piece at the top. And so this is going to be the same area again, but now four feet high because eight feet plus four feet is 12 feet. But it's a triangle, which means we're going to divide by two or multiply by half. This gives us 1,440 cubic feet. We add the two together, we get 7,200 cubic feet. Nine air changes, which gives us 64,800 cubic feet per hour. Divide by 60, we have 1,080 cubic feet per minute for the living room. So let's add these all together. We have the basement at 461, kitchen and dining room at 512, the bedrooms at 231, living room at 1080, brings us to a total of 2,284 cubic feet per minute. So now when we know that when we are looking to size a furnace or air conditioner, we know the volume of air that we need to deal with and how often that air needs to be changing. So the the fan on a furnace will be rated. So it might be 1,500, 1,600, 2,000, 2,200, 2,500 cubic feet per minute, however that is. So we need one that's going to be adequate. And it's not just enough to know, as I said in the beginning, how much air total is being moved. We also need to know where that's being moved to when we size our ducts. So the ducting is, is critical here. So we can look at the percentage of air being used in each location. 461 cubic feet per minute divided by 2284, which is the total, times 100, gives us 20%. 512 divided by 2284 times 100 gives us close to 23%. 231 divided by 284 times 100 is 10%. And 1080 
divided by 2284 times 100 is 47%. So you can see this is critical because if we had the same size ducting going to each room, the bedrooms would be getting way more air than they need, and it would be very noisy. The living room wouldn't be getting nearly enough air. The other rooms might be about right. So this gives you an idea of how to calculate the volume of air for air replacement. Now we have heating and cooling to deal with. In this lesson, I'm not going to get into examples of this because there's so many factors. And there may be a lesson later that uh, breaks down into this more. Let's look at some of the factors that work into the overall calculating of heating and cooling. So first of all, we have air volume. So just like air replacement, we need to know how much air we're actually heating or cooling. So we've gone over those examples. You can follow those. Location is also a key factor. So which climate zone you're in, that's based on which part of the world you're in. This could depend on altitude, whether you're in the mountains, by the ocean, in a desert. Um, you can find maps that will show you what climate zone your area is in. Also, the amount of exposure. In other words, how exposed to the elements are you? Does the wind hit your house really hard? Are you on the top of a hill with no trees around? Or are you tucked in the forest where there's very little air movement? Light. Do you get lots of light beating down on your house? Um, direct sunlight actually changes your heating and cooling factors a lot. Insulation. How well is your building insulated? Windows. The size of windows makes a huge difference, as well as the type of windows. How well are they insulated? Are they single glazed, double glazed, triple glazed, quadruple glazed? Um, do they have special coatings? There are so many factors that go into the insulated value of windows. Air leakage is a really big one that often isn't accounted for enough. It is important to have air exchange because we want fresh air in our house. But the amount can be more than we actually think it is. So again, this comes with how well the house is sealed. If you're in a windy spot, the wind can blow through. How tall the house is. We have convection. The hot air wants to rise and go to the top floors. We need to be able to pump that back down to the lower floors. Or we want the cold air from our lower floor and we want to be able to pump that up to the top floors to cool the upper floors. So all of these things factor in to the overall heating and cooling. That's why it's not as simple to, to calculate that as just calculating air volume. Although air volume is an important part of what you need to know when you're calculating your heating and cooling loads. So thank you for watching. We hope you've learned something and that you can be able to apply this to your life at some point.